Hey there, we're going to do another MagJS tutorial. This is uh, the latest uh, tree version. Um, not an official release, but it's still available through NPM. Um, so you can use the unpackage to get it in your browser or browser script, or you can uh, do M NPM install MagJS uh, to get that version. Um, so today we're going to show a, a simple example of uh, basically creating a random message component and I'm going to show some interesting uh, ways that MagJS works in regards to components as well as um, services and uh, things like that. So this example, I just want to show you, this is from React, a uh, very simple example. It's actually using the old create class but basically you have a, a list of uh, messages, you randomize it, on click you see a different one. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I guess I'll fork that. And normally you would have a root. Let's uh, check some of the configs. Let's grab our unpackage. But let's see here, settings, JavaScript. We don't really need um, Babel. We don't need React. Save and close. Okay, so the only thing I'm really going to keep are the messages, and we're going to create a function called like get new message, something like that. So this will be kind of what you might call our service. But before we even start there, I'll just keep this here. Before we even start with this, let's kind of get things set up in a simple way. So I'm going to remove everything except this one on the bottom. So let's move everything until here. Now instead of render, everything is a mag function. Um, the only difference is that we don't use JSX. We use our function components and we just attach it to our div. This is for a mounted object. Okay. So this would be our application container. Um, so why don't we just create a quick example of that. So we say app equals mag. Again, we use the mag function. The difference here is that we actually create our uh, HTML and then our function definition. So what we want to do is we want to display a message, right? So what does our HTML look like? So we probably have a div container. Everything, every function component always needs a div container, a top level div. So let's just, for, you know, testing let's just create something very simple now you have to return something um, when you create a function definition for instance you can say hi right well that actually output something so you see it what it did is it took your template and it put it here when you call the function into the root now you could obviously pass props through the function call um, and you can interpolate things uh, through the properties, right? But more specifically through object mapping. So you would say something like, but not to the parent container. So you do like a, a P tag and you say like for P, say Mike. This is just showing you a very simple example if you're not familiar with mag.js and obviously you can pass props through here into here. And anytime uh, you wanna change it, you just call the function again. So, for our randomizer, we want to have a message, right? So why don't we make that into an H1? And we're gonna say H1 is gonna be our message and it'll probably be a props message. Okay, so we wanna display it and more importantly is on click, we wanna have a button. So why don't we create a button? Say random message. And then on click at that button, you say button. So here we're mapping functions. Usually any attribute or property that starts with an underscore, but with ons you can just do like that. So we're gonna call our function get new message, right? We have it up over here, get new message. So on click, get new message. And the idea is that get new message is gonna return a new message that will populate the props with. So before we get into any kind of async, let's just kind of do a simple example. So if this gives us a new message, 
and then we want to call a new message. All you have to do is call the app again with that value and it interpolates it here. We'll recall it and interpolate it with the new value there if it's changed. So why don't we get started and just create our first first message. We'll say, hey. So there you see, hey, and we, when we click uh, that, now we want to make sure we're returning a message. So it looks like we have three of them and we just return this. All right. So let's see how that works. There you go, you see? Very simple. MagJS is, is not supposed to be complicated, it's supposed to be very, very simple. But in this example, I wanna go a little bit further and show you guys um, just a little bit more, right? So for instance, in the real world, you know, you might have uh, usually a service is asynchronous, right? So for instance, you probably would wanna call the message initially on load. So how would I call the message on load to call the first one? We don't want, hey, we want an actual message and we want it to be asynchronous. So let's just emulate that and return a new promise with the resolve. We're not going to worry about errors. And then we'll uh, resolve the new message. And that way we can kind of do more real world uh, you know, with loaders and things like that. So we'll actually do it within a set timeout to emulate real world uh, defaulting. All right, so we're gonna set timeout. And we'll do it, let's make it visible. We'll do 450, okay? So here we wanna basically say is that when we get this new message, then call our new app with that message. So here we'll just put a placeholder dot dot dot. See how fast it was? Oh, there you go. So there you show the dot dots for a second because we did 450. But let's say it was a normal service assuming 150 milliseconds. Let's see if you, oh, you can still kind of see it, all right? But anyways, so we're gonna add save 450 and there's our message. So what's happening here, this is being called first and then this is being called second because it's asynchronous. And when you click the randomizer, now we're gonna do the same thing over here. We're basically gonna copy this exact same thing here. So we're saying on click, asynchronously call the, the service. When it resolves, call the app application, the application just call with the new value and interpolates it. That's very simple, right? I don't know, oh, there it is. <laughs> Now, did you notice there was a, a weird delay because I kept on clicking it? So in normal application, you would disable this until it's done, right? That's so kind of like a loading icon. So we want to have it disable. So basically is we want to have a new value, a new props that uh, says, am I loading or am I not loading? If I'm in the middle of loading, let's disable this button, for instance. So first, let's hook into that property. So like I said, all attributes or properties are underscore. And we're gonna say, you know, props.loading. If that's true, then we're gonna disable that. If not, false. Okay. And then over here, we're gonna call app again. Oh, there we go. I knew there was something wrong. <laughs> So before we call a get new message, we're going to call loading here and we're going to add true to it. So now when I click this, it should get disabled. You see it's disabled, but now it's, we need to re-enable it. So here we'll say loading equals false. So now you see it loads, we click random, and then when it loaded again, it's enabled again. So that's kind of cool, but normally you would have also maybe like a loader icon or subcomponent. So I want to demonstrate not only a asynchronous service and not only uh, you know attributes or classes changing, but how about another another component? Let's create a really simple component. Um, I actually have an example here 
uh, I didn't want to do it from scratch right this second. I want to make this a quick tutorial, but I wanted to show you what something that, that like that might look like. So here's a very simple app, and all this app has is a loading component. So we call the loading component like this. Now, with Mag.js components, it's maybe a little bit different, but basically every, uh, it has a, a, a HTML definition, and then you have your function handler. So you have to know certain things about the function handler. The function handler can take certain values. Usually it's an object mapping to the elements in there. Now, in this case, we don't necessarily want to do that, but if the props don't change, it won't necessarily reinterpolate it. But it takes whatever value you put here to heart. So it, what I'm trying to say is that you need to return at least an empty object, even if you're not gonna use any props here. And you should always have a top level element HTML element and then manipulate usually the sub elements if you're going to manipulate them. So what I want to demonstrate here is how to use this component within uh, an asynchronous call to show it or hide it. So the way to do that is you want to usually have a specific uh, element container within your top level component in which the sub component is going to sit in or be added to, mapped to. So here you can see when the props is loading then, so when there's loading, kind of in our other example, at message, then we have loading equals true. So when that happens, we're attaching the loader component to the loader element in our top level component. And when it's not, we add a null, which basically removes it. Okay, so we're not removing it in here in the component. We're removing the component from the top level component. So this is a proper way to add and remove components on top level uh, a child component from a parent component basically. So we're having a property as like a true or false, we show it or we give it a null. Now you could put a show or hide property inside the loader. You could pass a property here that would like show or hide or change the messaging. That's fine, you could do that too. You can be as creative as you want. I just wanna show kind of the top level of how to do this kind of thing. So why don't we copy uh, the component here, so we're going to just uh, add that component, uh, let's say that's our loader component, and here we're going to create our loader template container. So now we say loader, if props.loading is true, put my loader component, if not, no. That's it. So as you can see here, we have our loader component. Whenever props loading is true, it's going to add it to the loader here. So why don't we check it out? Let's see what happens. If I click random, you see it said loading down there. Now what about on initial load? Let's look on initial load what happens. On initial load, you didn't really see anything, right? So how to do an initial load is the same way. We add loading here as true. And then over here, we'll add false. But first, let's just check it out. So you can see I added loading equal true here. So it shows that component. And now when it resolves, we just change it. So it's basically exactly the same thing as the other place. OK. And that's pretty much it. That's the example. Um, I'm going to put this uh, URL into the video description so you guys can check it out, take a look, play with it, uh, you know, see what happens. Um, I'm going to rename that. <laughs> Say mag.js random message with loader. How about that? All right. Well, thanks for your time, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the, the tutorial. And until next time, thank you.